Hello, this is my entrance for the Moog 2012 circuit bending competition. I will be using an Akai S20. And with a bit of luck, we'll be learning how to go from this to this in just a few hundred easy steps. Uh, so what I'm going to show you is that I've added uh, some pitch mods. I have added some bends used switches, the floppy drive still works, I'm going to load it up with the required Moog samples uh, from the Google Doodle, and yeah, I think you're going to like it. I'm really uncomfortable bending before a video camera, I get too frustrated, I get nervous, I feel like I'm being watched, so what I did was I documented the bend process with pictures. Through all these pictures you'll see the, the disassembly and gradual reassembly of the piece, Skipped a couple steps because there were some hiccups. Yeah, there was just a couple little things that happened during the disassembly that I didn't document because they were completely unanticipated. I've modded this this kind of unit before, never never so extensively though. Um, but you see that ribbon cable on the left hand side had a tear in it from the guy who owned it before me or girl, of course. Uh, now what you see there is I'm pointing out the X3 uh, clock crystal, which is the clock crystal I'll rip out and replace with the LTC1799 which is a uh, resistance controlled uh, crystal oscillator, a uh, uh, square wave generator basically that functions as a, uh, a replacement clock crystal. And um, along here is underneath where the RAM is and that's where all the bend points are. And it was really just a matter of finding some that I like. There's pretty much all of them work. And by work, I mean Really, you can just short any two of them together. And that's all the switches that you're going to see do. They just short two points on the RAM together. It's just a matter of uh, bringing the switches together to a common point. Uh, and uh, here we are, a little bit more disassembly. I'm getting down to the, the control panel, which is where all the buttons are. Uh, and what I'm going for is, yes, exactly, the, the tap tempo. Uh, button and I'm going to replace that with a momentary switch from a guitar pedal. And I'll be doing that because holding in the tap tempo button causes the sample to stutter. It's a really cool effect. Um, here you see me marking some spots where I think I might put some switches in. Coming up you'll see why I don't like doing video while bending. It's just tremendously awkward. Uh, but basically I'm just showing off what I, what I showed earlier. Um, this is the disassembly, this is a little bit of live versus the previously shown still fo photos. Um, you see why the photos okay, are a little bit so better. Got it. Just uh, I'm not sure what I have to do to do that. There are screws here, 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 and here, here, here. In places where screws would go is basically what I'm saying here. So, yeah. Um, and then the whole unit detaches like this. And you see the underside of the board, and this is the area that I'm going to uh, to experiment with, uh, find some cool bends. A few more still shots to illustrate where the bend points were, a little bit more of what I did, uh, breakdown of everything that I did for this mod. It was a lot of work, it was a lot of fun to do. Things that are nice to note is that MIDI still works, uh, it still works exactly as stock. Um, oh, you see here, that is because a power trace died as I was working on it. Like I said, this machine had been wrecked to hell. So basically this was a repair, a rebuild, as well as a mod. So um, this project got a little bit more uh, spaghettified than I would like, but I ran out of the thin gauge wire last time, uh, last project, and I just have the kind of thicker stuff, which is fine actually because last time I did one of these with the, the thin gauge wire had a real lot of noise. A few more pictures, a couple more longer videos and uh, video clips, and then I'll get to the performance part of it. Uh, for the demos, I used samples that weren't the final samples that I used. I ended up using just samples from the Google Doodle.
So yeah, the pitch knob. It's an analog monophonic synthesizer. That it's an analog monophonic synthesizer. It's an analog monophonic synthesizer. That. And so then that's pitch. It's an so I'm going to set that to loop so you can hear. I'm just going to loop that. Edit, loop. And then I'm going to come back and load it up with the. Uh, so you just set it to loop. Uh, hold here. Choose between loop and hold. I'm going to go for a hold. So that means uh, it makes the waveforms by electronic means. And, and do the same thing for this. <laughs> so that means uh, it makes the waveforms hold. by electronic means. Set them all to hold. One note at a time. Okay, so that means it makes the waveforms by electronic means. One note at a time. So let's try some of the switches. That means it makes not all the switch combinations do something. So do really weird stuff. by electronic means and it plays one note at a time. That means it makes it. All right, now that we've shown that everything works and uh, demoed uh, Robert Moe's beautiful voice as destroyed by the sampler, uh, it's time to load up the sampler with some uh, great samples provided by the Google Doodle. And after this, I will uh, upload the performance using nothing but those Doodle samples. Thanks for watching the video. I really, really appreciate it. Cool thing is,